Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's so wonderful to see so many people here on a Saturday morning. Uh, my name is Katiana. I'm from the Center for Livable Cities. And together with URA, we have organized today's lecture. Um, CLC was created in 2008 by the Ministry of Environment and Water Resources and the Ministry of National Development to distill Singapore's story of sustainable urban development. And maybe URA needs no introduction, but just in case, it's a Singapore's land use planning and conservation agency with a mission to make Singapore a great city to live, work, and play. And CLC and URA often jointly collaborate for such knowledge sharing. And today, we're very lucky to be able to welcome Dr. Wang. Um, for those of you who have been to Shanghai, maybe you know about Tian Zifang, for example, or M50, or the pedestrianization of the bun. And uh, Dr. Wang, fortunately for us, has had a big hand to play in uh, such urban rejuvenation and conservation efforts. Currently, she's a professor at Shanghai's Jiao Tong University and the director of China Urban Governance Institute and the Center for Urban Studies. And, but for 20 years, almost 20 years, she was with Shanghai's Planning and Land Administration Bureau. And I've been lucky to be with her for a few days, and she actually shared with us that when she joined in 1998, Conservation and heritage was only one of the many things that she had to do. And so gradually through her efforts and the efforts of her team, it's become a major part of Shanghai's urban planning. So um, we'll be very lucky here today to hear her stories. I'll just walk you through a little bit of the format today. Um, we'll begin with her lecture for about an hour. And so it may be very exciting to ask questions, but we'll try and hold it off till the end of her lecture. And then uh, Kelvin Ang, the Director of Conservation Management with URA, will help to moderate the Q&A session at the end. So please help me in welcoming Dr. Wang. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great honor to be here. Thank you for URE and CRC to invite me here. And thank you all, all of you to come here in Saturday morning. Uh, it's really my great honor. Thank you again. So, uh, today, I would like to uh, exchange uh, my uh, opinion and uh, experiences uh, that we have done in Shanghai for many years. But what I want to say is that I really want to come here to learn from Singapore. I have visited here for twice, but uh, just uh, 10 days. But I really uh, think it's a great uh, country, and we need to learn from it a lot. So. Today, I would like to talk a lot of, uh, about Shanghai, but I would like to share more with you about the experiences of Singapore. Uh, a little bit about the history. Uh, Shanghai was a small town during the past 700 years before 1840. Uh, so uh, after uh, 10 years rapid growth uh, since uh, 1840, Shanghai grew up from the foreign settlements to an Asia, uh, East Asia center city in 1930s. Uh, in some way, that uh, Shanghai at that age is much more international than today's Shanghai, as my point will. Uh, for example, you could see the Hong Kong Shanghai Banking Corporation was uh, set up in 1920, uh, 1923, and the Park Hotel and the Peace Hotel. All this building was a marvelous building at that age. Uh, with was the most uh, uh, elegant building in the world, not only in Shanghai. So, uh, for example, here is the Grand Theater next to the uh, Park Hotel. People who live uh, in Tokyo will fly from Tokyo to Shanghai to the Grand Hotel to participate the opening ceremony of the. Uh, uh, Hollywood film, which was uh, held uh, in the same time in Hollywood. So that's called, uh, we can call Shanghai, it's a really East Asia center. It's a fashion, fashion center, it's a recreation center, and uh, it's a, um, a trading center too. So, uh, <laughs> but now Shanghai's uh, growing bigger and bigger. We have a that's a decade uh, uh, growing for the mass plan. Uh, but uh, now, today, 
we, uh, we, we, for the whole Shanghai, we have 6,600 uh, 6, square kilometers, but half of the land has been occupied for construction. So the environment for the city is very bad. So, uh, so the, we, uh, that's a bad situation uh, for us. So we need to do a lot of things to uh, prevent the expanding of the city. And of course, uh, in the meantime, we have uh, growing, uh, we call longer, it's big, uh, because uh, we, uh, we have the first line in 1993, but now we have uh, 18 lines, about 500 kilometers. So uh, we plan to have more in uh, about 1,000 kilometers. So that's the same scale with London and New York but we have more people taking the subway uh, station. So for example, I, 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 I have my car 10 years ago, but five years ago, I don't want to drive because I <laughs> it's easy for me to, uh, to, take, the ta to take the subway station uh, to, to my work. Uh, so it's a big change. We, uh, for the whole Shanghai, whole China, uh, it's a very uh, rapid, grows and uh, we see a lot of pressure. Of course, uh, higher, higher is a very important thing. 10 years and another 10 years. <laughs> and how about the future? Uh, we, someone said we need to stop growing higher, but uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not so sure about it. So. Uh, we, the central government had just uh, 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 issued the Shanghai Master Plan for 2035, uh, which means uh, Shanghai will not expand itself, means that, that the Shanghai will be, uh, will, uh, will not uh, have more uh, land to develop. So regeneration uh, will be uh, key issues in the future uh, development of Shanghai. Means we will pay attention to the quality of the city, to the quality, uh, equi equity of the land use, and to the uh, quality of the functions and of the public space, and uh, pay much attention to the people. So, uh, so what I want to talk is that it's a really tough work to protect to do conservation issues in the, during the past 20 years because Shanghai keep, uh, is keeping growing larger, higher, and uh, uh, densi uh, more density and rapid. So it's really a tough work to do that. Uh, do we do a very good job? If you look at this picture, it seems it's good, right? Because uh, fortunately, we preserved each building along the bond, uh, the first block, I should say. But uh, why we take the picture <laughs> in the night? When you look at that, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> when, then when that weather is good, so the image is like this. So uh, <laughs> what can we do? So I always say conservation and the regeneration is the same issues. We need to regenerate the city, we need to uh, make a rapid growth of the economic. Uh, in the meantime, we need to pre conserve, cons uh, preserve buildings. We need to preserve our cultures. We need, need to pay respect to the peoples, and also we need to pay respect to the uh, to the environment. So that's the reason I think uh, the whole China has changed their mind. Uh, they began to pay much attention. Uh, to historic preservation compared with 20 years ago. Uh, just uh, like, uh, <coughs> I, I would like to mention that 20 years ago when I graduated from the Tongji University, I'm a PhD uh, focusing historic preservation and I, I'm the first doctor in Shanghai Planning Authority. I, I'm the only man, one man who in charge of historic preservation, but the, the, this work is only one tenth of my work, so <laughs> so you know but that is. Uh, I think it's uh, very fortunate for me because I took the advantage. So I 
no whole story of the constellation and the, no, the story uh, on, on the back of, the, of it. So it's my fortune, I think. And so uh, I think it's uh, because it's a casual day, I, I would like to, I don't want to give a very uh, academic uh, uh, report, but I think case, case study is better. Uh, so I will give uh, six uh, case study that to let you to know uh, what shall have do, uh, what we try to do now and in the past. So uh, generally speaking, I need to tell you uh, uh, we what the duty of the urban conservation and administration in Shanghai Planning Authority. Uh, th there's three aspects. One listing historic buildings and areas to be preserved. That's very important. Uh, second is planning for these uh, areas, means not only define the building need to preserve, but also try to uh, preserve the landscape of the area, means we not only define the old things, but we also define the new development. Uh, we need to, we want to have a uh, sustainable redevelopment and regeneration. And in the meantime, uh, we need to improve the legislation of effects, registrations, and planning issued by government. So we, we do have uh, laws for historic building and historic areas. And in the meantime, we have the planning, uh, which was even stronger uh, for the uh, technical files that people need to obey. I will explain it to you later. Uh, uh, till now, Shanghai has already set up a, a system, we should say conservation system for urban heritage. Uh, one is architectural heritage. Second is historical areas. The third is historical streets. I should say historical streets is, uh, uh, that's the, it was Shanghai that who uh, the uh, start in China to pay attention to streets. So historic building, you can look at these buildings as so, so different, so variety. <laughs> so uh, when, uh, CRC invite me to, to talk about the culture of Shanghai. So actually I was, uh, at the very beginning, I was very confused because I, when I come from, Sh I, because I come from China, China has a very long traditional history, but in Shanghai, what culture? So I think the, there's some similar with Singapore. Uh, Shanghai is a city combined Western and Eastern together, and uh, it's, um, he has all different kinds uh, buildings in the city and traditional and Western style and, and Chinese style that they, they mix together. And we also have a very typical uh, uh, residential uh, style called Li Nong that combine Western uh, leaning house to courtyard. So it's very interesting. So I think that's culture. I think it's uh, inclusive. Uh, very uh, diversity and livable. And these are uh, all different kinds of uh, regional so, uh, areas. And of course, we define 41 areas to be preserved. I should say in the central downtown, we preserved one third of the area to be, to be the uh, historic uh, areas. But Compared with other, uh, other uh, historic areas in China, Shanghai defined this area, they should be very active, they should uh, combine uh, uh, the real life in the historic life. So function can be changed, uh, the uh, new, uh, new facility should be added to the old building, but uh, we should preserve it, but we, we should meet the uh, uh, modern use for the uh, new life. Uh, so we should make the historic uh, building, historic area to be one part of the real life in Shanghai. 
that's the very key issues in IELTS. So uh, just give some very good examples. So for example, uh, old Shanghai town <coughs> area is just like most of uh, Chinese downtown. I call that's the only uh, Chinatown in China. <laughs> yes, <laughs> really, yes, <coughs> you can feel it. And, and that's, the, that's the point, okay? Total the fabric, uh, the streets are totally different because it uh, was uh, built at, uh, uh, as a uh, British uh, concession at the very beginning in nine, uh, 1840s, but later become the public concession but it's, uh, it's a, a financial trade center for decades in, in Shanghai, in China, actually, but not now. Um, <coughs> this is the Henshan Fuxing uh, uh, historic areas, which uh, was uh, uh, residential areas. Uh, you can look at the, uh, the streets and the, it's, a, it's a formal uh, French concession, so uh, it's built for residents. So you can feel uh, <laughs> that's so different. <coughs> and of course, actually, Shanghai have, in the suburb, we have a lot of water town, uh, not so famous with Zhou Zhuang, <laughs> but actually we have very good ones. They, because they are in Shanghai, they are not so famous. <laughs> okay, but <laughs> yes. Um, <coughs> I would like to mention you about the historical streets. I would like to tell you a story because um, uh, I should say, I, uh, I give the <coughs> uh, suggestion to my director of the planning authority and to the mayor that we need to have historic streets. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, in 2005, uh, Shanghai had only two uh, subway, stage, uh, subway lines. Uh, um, at that time, the traffic was very bad, so the government decided to widen the streets in the central downtown. And there is a very famous streets. If you are Shanghai, you should know that uh, Fuxing Lu, Fuxing Xi Lu, Fuxing Zhong Lu, right? Uh, there's a very famous and uh, resident residential, we should say, uh, is, uh, uh <coughs> but main streets from west to east. Uh, uh, it's a very important uh, uh, streets uh, in Shanghai, but at that time uh, we tried to widen these streets from six, uh, 60 feet to about 100 feet. Okay, uh, but when you look at the Fuxing Donglu, the east part of the Fuxing Lu, it had already been widened. I, s I, I feel so sorry about it. So when they talk about me, because they n all know I'm a very stark person, because there's a lot of uh, buildings and heritage buildings along the Fuxing route. So the construction or the uh, infrastructure department uh, director uh, come to me, th he want to talk with me that is that possible for, for us to tear it down uh, just very few <laughs> Uh, heritage buildings and try to uh, widen it. But uh, when I go with him, I say, uh, it's, no, it's not good because I think historic streets uh, is very important for the image of the city. Uh, when you visit the city, it's not the bu individual building. Of course, individual building will give your image of city, but for uh, most of people, the streets, the image of the streets uh, the, the, the scale of the streets uh, and the texture of the streets, when you walk along there, uh, you have a better feeling for the city. And for historic areas, historic streets is very, very important. If you destroy it, you dis destroy the, the landscape of these areas. That, that's a key issue. So I give a report to my director, I say, we have more, uh, we, we need to uh, pay attention to historic streets. We, uh, we, we need not to widen them because there are more than 10 uh, line subway under construction. We need just to be patient. Uh, that's the only way for the metropolis to resolve their uh, 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 traffic issues, the only way. 
and I say metropolis cities always have tra traffic, <laughs> bad traffic. That's uh, that's the issue. That doesn't matter, okay. Uh, but I I was very fortunate because uh, my director accept the idea and we do a research. At that time, we define more than 150, uh, 44 streets will never be widened again. And we submit this report to the mayor because it was a big issue, not the issue for planning, but also for the whole city. We need to get the support from the director, from the mayor. But uh, fortunately, we get his total support. So I should say, if Shanghai has a very good uh, uh, landscape in the Puxi, uh, compared with Pudong, it's my po point of view, very <laughs> uh, human-based uh, and very comfortable and still have a history uh, memory. Um, I think uh, the historic uh, streets really did a very good job. Of course, after we define, we start to do research we we did the, we start to do all the research and to try to protect. I think uh, Singapore has already do a lot of such kind of work, much even detailed than we are. But we just try to protect uh, all the s scale of the uh, the streets and about the texture and even the pedestrian and the trees. And this is, is something that we are doing now. We try to, uh, <coughs> how to say, we make a better land with for the historic uh, buildings. Uh, that's the project I just finished uh, in a very, because it's a boutique shops, about 15, 15 square meters. It's a very famous uh, 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 super supermarket. <laughs> so, but uh, it's a very hard work because we do with him about six times, but finally we get his support and his, uh, uh, he said has better mark. Uh, okay, that's a story. And uh, that's a general story of the Shanghai uh, planning. So we have architecture, uh, we have uh, land, uh, 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 areas, and we have, uh, ha we have roads, uh, have streets. And <coughs> What I want to say is that after we define the historic areas, the most important thing I, I, I just mentioned, that we, because for the Bonn, for the Xu uh, Hui, for the People's Square, and for the Nanjing Xi Road, Nanjing Dong Road, all these streets are very uh, active uh, streets and very lux luxury land for people to try to own it. So the most important thing is that we need to not only define which building should be preserved, but also de to define what kind of regeneration we should do. So uh, in, sh in China, we have a uh, uh, historic uh, different level planning. Mass planning, we call uh, like zoning, we call controlled detail planning, but it's it's like joining. And we have construction detail planning, project plan design. That means everyone need to submit a plan to the, uh, to the planning department to get permission, uh, or else they cannot do any construction. So th that's the reason why we're so strong, because uh, our department, so in tw uh, 2005, we set a department like <laughs> you have. It's a department called Historic Department. So 10 people work for this department. And we, we do planning for this area and we give project permission. That's a key point because uh, it's very powerful. <laughs> but, uh, but why, but generally speaking, at that time, we do not have any planning for this area. Why? Because, you know, every plan is for new development, not for the old ones. Um, but look at these uh, two pictures. Uh, we have a building code. Shanghai have a building code. That means 
no matter where you build your building in the central part of Shanghai, uh, the, within the same uh, uh, area, uh, the, thank you. You can, you can have the same FAR, you can have the same height, and you can have the same, uh, 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 how say, coverage uh, uh, rate. So that mean, that kind of ridiculous, because you can build a higher building in the bond, but you, if, if you put this, bond, this higher uh, level to the Hengshan Road, that will be a disaster to the landscape. But because we do not ha have any planning or we do not have any building code to support that, that means I cannot stop people to build high-rise buildings in Hengshan Road. So that's a very uh, tough issue for us. So we decided to stop, to stop, give permission in this area until we finish the detail planning. So we do finish a detail planning. Uh, we combine zoning, combine urban design, combine landscape and historic preservation together and providing a guideline to uh, redevelopment, renew and new construction in this urban area, of course. But of course we, so the key issues that I would like to point when you look at this, uh, the, look at this image, you can see different colors of the building. That means we define, we measure every building for the red one that the listed building, uh, it means heritage, had already been uh, listed by the government. It's a heritage, a legal heritage, that red one. But do you mention that we have a yellow one? That yellow one is the building that you cannot demolish without permission by the planning authority. That means all this building is not so elegant or so, uh, it's not, maybe not so as good as the heritage, but the image, the landscape, and is uh, very important for the area. And if you demolish all them, the, the, that area will have no uh, historic image or history landscape. So we define each building. So you, when you look at this building, you will find that uh, almost two thirds of the historic buildings was defined not to be demolished. So that's the key issues for the historic areas because uh, we pay attention to the uh, whole uh, landscape, not only individual buildings. So uh, that's the final uh, uh, decision that what we need to do. Uh, first, because every uh, construction need to have a detail, have a zoning. So we do every do zoning, like, like, redevelop, uh, like FAR, building coverage, and hate control. Uh, and but of course, green is uh, accessible. Uh, in the meantime, just I mentioned, we defined building by building, block by block, to uh, not only block, uh, not only building. We, all, we also define some special uh, historic space, uh, not, but like gardens or like uh, pedestrian or inside the block. So all this should be. Preserve, and in the meantime, we add the urban design sectors. What do you mean urban design? For example, um, in Shanghai, if you build a new building, we need to set back from the streets uh, three to nine uh, meters back. But when you look at the historic buildings, each building built right uh, uh, next to the streets. Right, so if we obey the rule of the historical area, we disobey, we disobey the uh, building code. So, in this 
planning, we defined uh, if uh, if uh, uh, we need uh, we defined if there are no subway station underground or if there's nothing very special, the setback guideline is zero. You it's better for you to just build the building next to the streets. Uh, that's very important thing. And of course, we have different control uh, for the height. For example, in the bond, we can have a higher uh, uh, height control, like 40, uh, 40, 40 to 50 meters, like six to seven floor uh, around the, uh, around the uh, streets. And we have a lower height in the yard, right? That's, uh, that's, uh, that's the image of the bone. And in the meantime, in, in the Hengshan Fuxing Road, because it's a very good residential areas, so we have lower, we have lower uh, height control along the streets, and we permit some reconstruction that behind that street that you cannot see, it means you can be a little bit higher if, if uh, it did not destroy the image of the streets that people have uh, benefit to do street regeneration. So we have a different control of the uh, building along streets and not along streets. Of course, we, we permit greenery coverage no less than original. For example, most of the traditional Chinese town do not have greenery space in each block, okay? So, uh, and, and the bond, they do not have green space, but we think it's good. Uh, it doesn't matter if you don't have. Uh, that's very important. And also, we uh, building scale, texture, color, and medi uh, medical uh, material guideline. So, if we can define, we try to define everything. Uh, that is really good for, the, but of course, we do a lot of history uh, uh, measure and uh, so it's very important thing. So uh, look at this, after all this <coughs> uh, research, we, we have a guideline for each block, for each building. So there's pictures, images, and there's zoning and all kinds of things. For example, you can look at this, it's a green corridor, means people can walk along the corridor no matter which land, be, who the land use, uh, <coughs> who own the land. But uh, if you redevelop this area, you still own the land, but you need to give the public uh, uh, corridor to the public. Uh, I think uh, Singapore had do a lot of such kind of things, very good, open to the public. Uh, no matter who is the owner, right? Uh, so that's what I trying to do. We trying to do. Okay. Uh, so uh, <laughs> I just talk about the detail planning. That means uh, each block, each building had his uh, so it has his uh, guidelines. So no matter who you are, if you want to do some re uh, regeneration or uh, redevelop of this area, you can check uh, this guideline because all this uh, uh, um, planning has been issued by the government and can be open to the public. public. Um, okay, the <coughs> so let's go to another <laughs> uh, interesting uh, places. The bone. Bone is famous. Uh, it's very famous. And that's the place that you got to be, <laughs> got to visit when you are in Shanghai. If all else, that means you have not been in Shanghai. <laughs> okay. But uh, this image, you you cannot see again because I took this picture. It's about uh, 80 years ago. It, it was demolished uh, about 10 years ago, I think. Because uh, you, when you look at this, there's a bridge, right? But we, we do not have bridge now. We just put this bridge underground. There is a bond we call bond tunnel. Okay, I will tell the story about it. <coughs> uh, so when you, uh, I, I should say generation is always happened. Uh, this uh, 
it's, it's keep, uh, you can, no matter if you preserve the building or not, but it, the generation is uh, issues that we will getting, uh, we are doing forever for the city. And so <coughs> when I just tell you that uh, the, in the history, <coughs> the bond was the CBD, but uh, when after the revolution, uh, when People's Republic uh, uh, comes in, uh, all the government took these buildings. So uh, actually, um, so for example, this, this building was uh, the formerly the uh, city hall. <laughs> uh, so, but late, uh, but uh, back to 1990s, the government decided they moved to a modern building in the People's Square, they built a new building and give back this building for financial use. Uh, so there is the start, they uh, start to uh, build the main uh, traffic streets and start to replace the building, uh, the bond building means uh, uh, give back the function to finance, to, uh, to the banking. But unfortunately, <laughs> because the old building doesn't fit very good for the modern uh, functions of the today's bank. So uh, it's not so successful. But uh, so in 2002, we start to do the re uh, redevelopment of the uh, 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 waterfront of Huangpu River. I think Liu Taige, Mr. Liu Taige, was invited to participate to be a judge of the competition because I'm the person <laughs> little like <laughs> uh, Kiliana to make the organize for the <laughs> competition, exactly. I'm the, yes. So uh, it's a very interesting thing that that's the first international competition by government in Shanghai uh, uh, in 2002. <laughs> so we are, we are going to international, not so much. And of course, then later, uh, they determine, determine to uh, do planning for the uh, historic preservation of the band. So that's record the history uh, of the, uh, the, uh, the band. But I want to tell you a key point is in two, 2007, uh, the, because uh, we plan to do, we try to do a, a you know, it, when you look at this picture, it doesn't exist uh, like that bridge. It's a high elevate uh, building. Uh, but the reason is that uh, we, we start a, we start a, a plan that because you, when you look at the history's, build, uh, history's bond, we have turned uh, right for for the for the for the car uh, is about 100 meters wide, uh, but but uh, we decided to put uh, six lanes on the ground and put four lanes on the ground, and but that's uh, right be before the uh, war exp uh, war exhibition Shanghai uh, war exhibition. Uh, it's because the uh, construction was, was very complicated because we need to stop the traffic and there's so many heritage buildings and they still have a very weak uh, we call waterproof wall <laughs> along the bond. So it's so complicated. So the um, infrastructure department don't want to do that. So <laughs> they stopped doing that. They, they uh, especially the traffic uh, uh, department don't want to do it too. They, so one day when, when this happened, so I would like to tell about the story because we start to do a renovation of the bond origin. What do you mean bond origin? In Chinese, it's Wai Tan Yuan. That's a project. That project is a redevelopment, regeneration, and historic preservation. And this 
piece of land, when you look at this, uh, that's the history. And this, this is the first land for this to the British. It means that British Council, the for former British Council, is settled, he uh, settled here. And this is the first land for, for the band to, uh, this uh, kind of first piece of land of the uh, concession. Uh, but during a long time, a lot of office occupy this. And you can look at it, there's a lot of modern buildings was built during 1970 to 1990s. But we decided to uh, regenerate this area and to, uh, so that's the feature today. Uh, it's black, but it's very, because it looked like the formal uh, uh, barn, you know, <laughs> uh, because we, when you look at it, you will see here, we demolish this high rise building. We demolish, if you know the Yo Yi Shang Dian, if you are French, friendship shops, I would demolish all the higher buildings, okay? Um, so after we turn down so many modern buildings, we build a, we give a space for a peninsula hotel. But uh, it's really a tough work because I changed the, their design for 19 th times <laughs> in order to get the permission, not only to to the mayor, but also because the mayor pay attention to this pro project and, and also need to persuade the experts who focus on historic preservation of the skyline of the barn you, you, when you look at that. So you can understand me. I, I'm, I don't want to do that, but it's my job. Okay, so that's a, uh, but at that time, we, the local government has signed a treaty with the peninsula. They will demolish this bridge before 2000, uh, 2008. But uh, if, if all else, they will have, have a very bad will, right? They die right here. Just, uh, we demolish one and build one. So the bridge will just, right, cut there. <laughs> so they don't want to do any structure because uh, uh, the tunnel, the bond tunnel stopped. So when I give the report to the mayor about the, about the design of Peninsula, I say the, the design today is good. We can prove it. I suggest the mayor <laughs> prove it. And in the meantime, the local uh, mayor asked the, so he, he suggests that to demolish this bridge. And he said, we have same treaty with uh, Peninsula. But uh, there is a big argue. So the mayor asked, what's your opinion? What's your opinion to the different the director of different department. <laughs> they all sit there. Uh, no one answers. So because I'm the little guy, <laughs> I'm the people who give the point point. So say, I say, uh, it, fortunately, that, that, that time, because uh, it's an ur urgent issue, my director asked me to go directly to give the report. So I say, can I ma give my own opinion? It's not, I cannot, on, that, uh, on behalf of planning authority, right? <laughs> I cannot. Uh, even, I, I, I should tell you that even in our uh, 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 planning department, uh, we have different uh, uh, opinions. So I say, uh, I think I would like to say something. Um, uh, I know someone said because we put six lines under ground and leave four lines, so totally is 10 lines. So we do the bird uh, tunnel, bound tunnel, it's not for traffic. We are doing that for public space. We will give more space to space, public space, because we narrow the lane, we, we will set free 10, uh, 15 meters, half of the wide to the public. To, so that means we give the space to public. And that means we will uh, make a very 
good connection with the bond on the waterfront. You know, before that, no one can go cross on the road. We need to go to a dark tunnel and walk through, go up to the bone. If, uh, so that's, uh, that's, we do not do that for traffic. We do that for public space, for the image of Shanghai, because the bond is image on and for the people, for the people. Uh, and I know it's very complicated, uh, we're very complete uh, uh, construction. So we need to get the support from the people. So my suggestion is that we give our design and give our uh, uh, design to the public, that the public make the decision. So after one month's announcement, we get 95% support. But the other, the 5% is they said, we need more trees on the bond because it's too hot when, when we walk along the bond. So congratulations. That not, that's my suggestion, but the people make the decision. <laughs> Good. So, okay, there, that's the image today now, but not the final image. So we preserve all these buildings and all these buildings they are not heritage buildings, but that time, but now it comes to be a heritage building, but we will have new construction next to it. It's residential because we try to keep the economic balance for this redevelopment. So that's a <laughs> big conflict. Some experts said you cannot do these things because we need to preserve all the all this image for, for the city. But uh, as my point will, if, uh, if we preserve what we should preserve, we can build something new, right? I, I think it's, we call the generation and conservation. We combine together to make a better life for, for the future. Uh, we preserve the culture, we preserve the building, but also we need to uh, man, uh, meet the needs for the new, uh, for the future. So, okay, that's a story about uh, the bone. But I, I, my, I have a suggestion that this is a very good place, but because there's a very huge garden, a lot of people can't do, uh, uh, is afraid of going in, but actually it's open to the public. And <laughs> yes. And they have a very good lunch tea. Xia Wu Cha, is that? Yes. Uh, on the basement. Terrific. Uh, <laughs> so, welcome to come. And of course, uh, we now uh, come to a story about uh, Tian Zi Fang. Uh, everyone uh, likes Tian Zi Fang. A lot of people, when they went, and they, will, they told me they love Tian Zi Fang. That's, uh, that's good things. But I don't like today's Tian Zi Fang. It's not so good as before, <laughs> as my point will. <laughs> yes. So I, I can tell you the story because um, it was the image of 2003, that picture I took. Um, you know, Li Nong, when you went to a gate, this, this um, building was originally designed for one family because when you enter a gate, one family own that unit. But when time goes by, <laughs> five to 10 families share one unit. So that's the terrible thing. Uh, that you can look at the situation and I should tell you that they do not have their private toilet for each family. So at that time, people who live there fight every year to the government to try to move out they, they ask for move out. So uh, the local government signed a treaty with the developer who is a Taiwan developer called Ri Yue Guang Group. So uh, they, they, but uh, during the, that time there's a economic crisis so they do not have money. Uh, at that, so uh, during that time, some artist comes in and they ran the house, not the, the, the warehouse and the plant in the 
in the block, not the residential area. When you take a serious look of the Tianzi Fang, you, you will find there are a lot of high, not high rises, six floor buildings and some buildings like this. They are factories, they are community factories originally, not for residential. So a lot of artists rent it with a very low rise uh, price. It's about one point, uh, 0 0.1 yuan per day. <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> okay, that's because they know this land has already sold to the, sold to the developer. They will move out at any time. Uh, so they just ran temporarily. But from 1999 to 2003, about 100 artists gathered together. They have their own studio. For the, they, there's a real studio. They paint there. They sew their painting there. And they sometimes they uh, add some space to sleep there. So there's a real studio, and it's very fashion. For example, this is a studio have with this, uh, Shanghai very famous uh, photographer, uh, Dong Qiang. And another space is very famous painter, uh, Chen Yifei, who had already gone. Uh, but two of them write a letter, and with 100 artists sign, <laughs> this letter go to the mayor because in 2003, the developer had the money and they asked the local government to pull people out and they, they need to go down the redevelopment. So, but uh, the artists don't want to move. That's a very good location. <laughs> they don't want to move. So that later goes to mayor and go, the mayor asked my director and the director asked me to do a report. <laughs> my God, <laughs> hard work. So I went to this place to talk with local people, to talk with uh, the artists, to talk with the developer and the local government. You will know that's a big argue, right? The, the, because the, the people who live there really want to move out. That's, uh, that's, a, oh, that's a saying that if we want to be rich, it's, it's better to be removed. <laughs> it's a very good chance to be to getting rich, right? Yes, for ordinary people. So, so, okay. So finally, I have to write a report. So I gave a report for conservation Tianzi Fang. But actually, I I should tell you, I did not say preserve Tianzi Fang for almost ten years. The reason I can tell you later. First, I give. The reason historic preservation is Lino, but this Lino is not very good Lino in Shanghai. Okay. So that's only one reason. Second is the public space. When you look at that pier, there's a open space, uh, there's a coffee, and there's a free Wi-Fi. In, ten, free, in 12 years ago, that's amazing, right? That's a public space. But at that time, that almost no people, right? But he, now, you, when you look at it, it's very crowded. And here, uh, we, we call it initial creative industry. That just emerged in China. I think that's a very important issue in, in Shanghai. And of course, I think what makes this happen is I give a suggestion because the owner, uh, the developer owned two pieces of land. The land is right, right south of that block. So that's the reason why someone criticized, why you build so high rise building right in front of Tianzi Fang? <laughs> yeah, but because we, my suggestion is like, we transfer FAR of Tianzi Fang to that part, block. And, but the local government fight, say no, because this residential will argue. And if you preserve, I will tell the address of your office that the people go to your office, okay? Uh, if you <laughs> say you will preserve. It's okay, okay, so I did not say for 10 years. <laughs> that truth. So I just say uh, we, we, we will not demolish it now. We will build, build that part, okay? So we, in my mind, I think uh, 
it will be preserved. And I tell people that that the future tell us. We, we, cannot, we do not need to make the decision now. Let the future make the decision for us. So that's the strategy. So, <laughs> okay, so uh, of course, after 2004, uh, there is some, uh, there's something interesting happened because people know they will not uh, move out very soon. So they began to lend their house because most of them do not live there, they already move out. So, because uh, it's kind of very popular artist. So, this is the image that you cannot look, cannot find today. <laughs> it's in 2010. Okay, I take the picture myself. But uh, you can see that's the reason that why a lot of people love Tian Zifang. Because there's a, a, a picture turned by the MIT professor Tony Lee. Uh, my someone will know him. He took the picture and sent it to me because it was a really nice image. Because people still live there, so that means people can make their own decision if they want to st stay there or they want to move out. So and individ uh, so sometimes they big argue because there's a bar underground uh, at the first floor. And sometimes there's some water throwing from the second floor <laughs> because it's too noisy. So interesting. Okay, so when we go back to, but now Tian Zifang is kind of very popular uh, thing. So uh, when we look back, no one will say we'll demolish Tian Zifang, but is that a way that we can copy? in the other part of Shanghai, because we have so many Linon. We need to preserve, but we have no money. We, 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 what we can do? So uh, I'm rethinking about these things. I think uh, most of the time, the government really wants to do something good for the, for, for the citizen. But sometimes we can set back a little back, let, let people to make their own decision. That might be a wise uh, strategy. And, uh, but of course, later you will find that government really need to do something. So after uh, Tian Zifang become very popular and they rent their house to, okay. <laughs> I'm, okay, I, I will save my time. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, so uh, I think that government still do very good things. They uh, began to renew the public infrastructure, electric water supply and drainage and uh, etc. So, okay, so uh, the last case study <laughs> is uh, historical preservation of warehousing industry. Uh, I like this building because I persuade the mayor, now the vice president of China, to preserve it. That's true, that's true story. <laughs> that's my first project in Shanghai Planning Authority because the mayor had decided to demolish this and build green space along the stroke creek. He's right because he did not check the building, right? I checked it for him, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Taiwan uh, uh, architect uh, do the inter interior design and I find it and I persuade the mayor to pres uh, preserve it. And later he won the UNESCO Asian Pacific Heritage Award in 2004. And he phoned me, at ah, this price should go to you. I say, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I, I do want to do something <laughs> how to say? <laughs> huh? Okay. okay. So if we, if I still want to preserve something, so let it be. I, I really appreciate. So what I doing? I, I don't want to argue or persuade mayor again and again. So I, what I'm doing is that I go along with a lot of experts and the designers right, along the Stroke Creek to find more than 100 warehouses and uh, uh, plants that should be preserved. And 
put a chapter on the planning, landscape planning. Uh, to the, there is a chapter, historic uh, buildings need to be preserved. So next time the developer, the local company need to argue with me. So need to make, 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 uh, make negotiation with me because uh, all this building is uh, preserved in the planning and the planning is approved by the mayor, by the government. So it's a legal uh, file that everyone should obey. So I, I, <laughs> so I think uh, I, I talked with the officer with uh, um, URA. Uh, I think planning is a good way to preserve historic buildings <laughs> rather than heritage building because yeah, heritage building. So what happens, all this uh, comes out, okay, uh, uh, a, beer, a beer factory become a uh, boutique hotel and F50, okay, of course I, s I write five times report to get permission and uh, which was very popular now. And of course, A Bridge, uh, you should go when you, and, <laughs> and the Slaughterhouse, I find the, the newspaper who find this building and I, we, we, we define to be protected. And also, I'm a developer, I'm the developer of Hongfang, the red town is the Shanghai uh, uh, Sculpture Center because I, uh, I protect this building and make it to be a Shanghai Sculpture Center for the Planning Authority. And I'm the Department of Historic Building and Public Arts in the meantime. <laughs> so that's the reason I can do that. Okay, so uh, that's uh, history that when we go, we, we, we define a lot of building and now this is kind of a uh, very popular thing in Shanghai, okay? Uh, in the meantime, we, we define not only building, more than uh, 100 years should be preserved and then that the, any history building, if they record the history of the industry, they should be and could be preserved. So that's a, you call Yinxiong Jinbi, general a hero, hero pen, right, hero pen. Hero pen, this uh, we pre, it was decided to be demolished, but after we do a historic research, we give a report to the mayor and we preserve almost every age because from 19, for 50, the first building is 1950 to 1960 to 1970 to 1980 to 1990. So we preserve all of them. For the new function, it's okay, but all this, uh, so Shanghai is a very, uh, what I want to talk is about, we start to do individual building, industrial building, uh, regeneration, but there's a big issue for Shanghai. We still have uh, one third of the land for industry, but it's impossible. So what we should do, we define a lot of uh, industry area should be preserved, okay? So that's a new, that's a research that done by me after I leave the government to do the research. I do the research for the, uh, so I, I give a report uh, to what happens to the industrial heritage. There's some, uh, there's uh, what's important. And I suggest that we should not, only for individual buildings that we need to preserve area. And uh, there's, uh, a lot of people say Shanghai has uh, set a good example for his industrial heritage uh, conservation. But as my point will, there's still a lot of problems and challenges. So I gave a report to the uh, uh, municipal government of construction. They really uh, agree with me and they say they will do something for that. 
And I, so I start to do a very interesting. So I think we need to do it not only on individual buildings. We need to do a strategy, position, general survey, evaluation, overall planning, urban design, and policy innovation to all this area. So that's a location of this area, about 24 kilometers. It's about uh, uh, 300 different companies on that line. But generally speaking, they, they, they facing transition. Uh, the most famous is the Bao Steel Company. Uh, they, uh, this part has been totally, sh the, they did not work anymore last, uh, at the end, uh, at the last June, they start, uh, stopped. So when you look at this picture, is that great? Uh, this is the history, uh, okay. okay. <laughs> so I protect uh, regeneration, creation, so generally speaking, it's uh, overall transformation. Okay, so I need to do landscape issue uh, uh, to establish the foundation uh, and the full information network for the whole, each, um, means each building, no matter it will be demolished or not, will be measured and we will set a 3D. So that's a uh, uh, big issue. So, so each building has his uh, paper, uh, his, uh, his, how to say, record. I think that's a very important thing. So how this steel making area was built in 2009, but it's never used. Should we turn it, should we demolish them all? Okay, so that's a marvelous building can for all kinds of use. Why do not, we, do, we should, that's, that's me, that's, that's me. <laughs> wow, I, I was so excited about that. So I tried to persuade them, but the, the, the Bao company say, wow, we are tired for this. Why you should preserve this? So okay, we measure, we, we do 3D, we sketch up so that we can look at them at any. So it's amazing, right? It's exactly what they like, okay? It's a, just take a look of it. So, so we define the blue, the, the, the yellow, the uh, orange one should not be demolished. So, and we, uh, not only the building, but the landscape, the road, uh, the railway, how, is that amazing? Yeah, and is that amazing places if you demolish? So we add uh, the roads uh, in the, big uh, block, so that's what I want to do. I define all these areas and that, of course, new developers should come. So we do it as a city, not an industrial area. So we add a lot of streets inside. So that's a, just an image, uh, preserve something and green space and the green park. Okay, so still plants uh, decided to be the Shanghai Academy of Fine Arts now. <laughs> okay, so we need policy. Okay, so that's a lot of policy we need to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So finally, need to develop innovation updating policy. So I need to learn from you. And final image. This is a is factory? Restaurant. Restaurant? Could you point out? It's an office. Do you know what kind of office? Facebook. Facebook. New office, which was just designed by Frank Gehry. Can you believe that? <laughs> so it's totally one plan. So I have two levels. The first level is, is parking space and the facilities, the, the about three, uh, 3,070, uh, 700 people stay in one platform like this. And they have a roof, they call economic uh, economy roof that people go outside. 
that's the Frank Gehry design. I cannot believe it. I, I, yes, I visited the friend, uh, I'm, I'm low fellow for Harvard. So we, we took a Harvard uh, study trip uh, uh, to, to, to take a look at it in the, uh, in the, in the uh, weekend. So that's, uh, so that's what I want to say. Industry heritage preservation and regeneration is for the future. It's the future space that has unlimited possibility, constant change, and multiple choice. So that's my <laughs> point of view. So final, can you see China Bank? But can you see it's the China Bank in the bond? So we have relationship, I should tell you. They are the same architects. China architects, famous architect Song Da Yo. Uh, this uh, band is the, is the only Chinese architecture, uh, the architect in the bond building. And they, he built the same building in Singapore. So I'm so glad, so I take a picture. <laughs> Thank you for your CRE and URE colleague bring me there, okay? So I need them for you. Thank you. So thank you so much, Dr. Wang, for your fascinating sh stories. I'm sure you would agree with me that we learned a lot, especially the productive fights, if you will, that she had in government to make Shanghai the way we know it today. Um, so Dr. Wang and Kelvin now will have a moderated discussion, following which we'll then open it to the floor for questions. Thank you, Dr. Wang. Um, for any of you who are new to Singapore, um, this is very important. Uh, I'm so happy that CLC has given us a glass drawing, a glass of water, because not just no plastic. We should be so, so proud that we've got drinkable water from the tap. It is a basic element of life that we have the privilege of using every day. And don't forget our soft power and the hard work behind the water. Um, thank you, Dr. Wang. I mean, I, I feel really... Um, I think we've learned so much this morning um, from the development of Shanghai in the past uh, 20, 30 years. So I will like to have the privilege of asking a couple of questions to get the conversations going before the floor uh, is open to the floor. And um, you know, I was, I was just thinking, um, Shanghai is this city that you said is different from the rest of China because it's so uh, relatively uh, young and very open to the world. It's a mixture of East and West. So in the rapid change in, in China since uh, liberation in 49 and subsequent uh, opening up in the, in the 80s, has the Shanghainese perception of uh, built heritage changed in, um, in some way, you know, between the, maybe the old city or the Dunge, et cetera? Do you mind sharing a little? Um, thank you, Kevin. Um, actually, I think it's uh, really good at, um, to share, but I think I need to learn from you. Uh, I, I mentioned that, but I'm, I'm really <laughs> thinking about uh, compare with uh, uh, other cities in China. Actually, uh, Shanghai people, a lot of people, and a lot of experts uh, really pay attention to historic preservation. So that's the reason Shanghai is the first city uh, to, s to build up a historic s buildings for less than 100 years. Wow. Yeah, that, and we have the first law, first act for historic buildings. In, in, in for young, it means um, m modern, modern architect. And and we also uh, sometimes get a lot of uh, letters, or we mm, we have newspapers that people will say they need to preserve something. Um, of course, actually, during the past decades, we have uh, 
de demolished a lot of buildings, uh, value buildings, no matter how, how many we have preserved, but we still demolished a lot. So now people began to pay a lot of attention to historic preservation, especially the leaders. <laughs> you know, today, no one can say historic preservation is not important, but, but 20 years ago, it's nothing, right? Compared with economic development, historic preservation is like a, uh, it's a bad thing that is not good for economic because you, you, you stop uh, rabbit plant new to preserve something. So it's a totally big change. But actually, when you're facing the real issues, uh, there's still a lot of conflicts. Uh, so we need, I, I would like to say, we, we need to give strategy for historic preservation because pr culture takes money <laughs> and heritage takes money because it's true that when you preserve building, you need to uh, to cost more money, three to five times, then you just demolish it, building one. So people, uh, for the government, I think we need to give funding or support bonus to, to historic preservation. That in the meantime, we need to, uh, a lot of uh, uh, strategy, for example, FAR free, my, as my point will, right? <laughs> for history building, right? Because if you preserve, uh, you still keep have your own new development FAR, uh, because it it's really takes uh, money to do that. Uh, or a lot of things because we need uh, people can work together and to, to set some fundings. So that's very important. That, that means we need to not only s say we need to preserve, we need the strategy, we need the policy, we also need the taxi, the taxation refund, something like that. This is my point, Will. Wow, yes, I suppose um, investing in the future means we have to have an entire system to, to invest in the future, even it though it would cost a lot more in terms of our resources. But I suppose what you are hinting at is that the, the, the people of Shanghai have a certain set of value systems that then um, support the planners and the researchers to try to find a new way forward for, for historic uh, 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 buildings in, 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 in the city. But I suppose part of the work in making historic buildings uh, workable for the future is down to the knowledge and I guess the manpower of the artisans, the craftsmen, the technicians um, in, in the transformation of, of these buildings. And of course, in Shanghai, you have the Chinese buildings, the Lilong buildings, and the skyscrapers of the Bund. Um, they are all designed different periods with different uh, technologies and different skills. Um, could you share a, a little bit on maybe some of the challenges in the technical reuse of these buildings uh, for the future? You mentioned a little bit that um, the government wanted to re, uh, repurpose the bun back to be the financial center of Shanghai, but these buildings no longer meet the, um, the current technical expectations. So may, could you share a little bit on some of these challenges? Um, for example, is it easy to find uh, the, the, the specialist to do the restoration in, in, in China or the building codes, etc.? Thank you. It's a very technical question. <laughs> Actually, I think um, we really uh, lack of uh, uh, technical uh, or experts for historic preservation. Uh, the reason why uh, Shanghai paid much attention because we have a lo uh, some very famous um, uh, university, like Tongji University, I graduated from there, and also Fudan University. Uh, they have a lot of uh, 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 professors who focus on that, like my uh, my professor Rai Shan, he was very, very famous in historic preservation. Uh, so, but we now we have, uh, we need to more uh, education, it's very important that in the meantime, uh, the craftsmen for, uh, uh, for 
uh, traditional building uh, skill is uh, very rare. So w I think it's very important for us to to do such kind of ed education and protection for them. And in the meantime, I think it's really, really um, important that we educate people, young people, uh, <laughs> young generation. They have the real awareness of what is the uh, culture means. The and so that's very, very important. Uh, that's a spirit thing, a cultural thing. It's the cultural, not, uh, I like the word, historic preservation is not for the past, it's for the future. So that's a word on, on URA or CRC, uh, I, I mentioned. So that's a real, real one. It's not for the past, it's for the future. So very important, we need to educate more people, training more people for uh, for skill, uh, for the protection. But also, actually, we have a lot of boundary in regulation, for, for example, uh, uh, fire protection uh, is not permit, is give a lot of, um, uh, do not permit wooden uh, rebuilding, right? But actually, that's the very traditional <laughs> Chinese way to build new. But why don't we support that? But actually, it, if you rebuild a building, wooden is always forbidden, Gener generally speaking. Okay, so that's a problem for people to rebuild a building uh, with a traditional um, method. So we need to innovation and be creative for historic buildings. That's a, a lot of problem we face because uh, people, tr if we pay a lot of, uh, we actually, we really want to protect it, but it obey the law. So it's, it's ridiculous, but that's a fact. I suppose um, what you have shown in your case studies is that the the, the historical preservation or regeneration projects often do challenge us to review existing uh, mindsets, frameworks, policies, and regulations to be really be performance-based in that sense, what we want. Uh, but in this journey, we really do need many more partners from the various industry to come on board and, and, and to create this economy of the future. Now, with regards to the future and economy, and for the, um, you know, very often, um, in, in Asia in particular, um, w I think we've reached a stage where most people can understand the value of heritage buildings. They do appreciate it somewhat. And more owners of especially traditional towns and buildings, uh, buildings in towns, they quite like it because they do see an economic value. But very often the value, as you've shown in Tian is, um, or, or maybe the Yuan, uh, the band, it's got to do with tourism. Now, tourism is, uh, is a tool. Um, it can be for good or it can have some side effects. Um, in Singapore, sometimes we do face uh, the challenge as how do you balance tourism and other forms of economic uh, um, activities in a heritage area? What is the best value to the owner and what's the better value to the city? Um, Shanghai, um, you know, tourism in Shanghai, I suppose, is, is a growth industry. Um, I remember going to the Yu Gardens district and uh, it was really amazing. There were tourists from the rest of China wanting to see this beautiful garden. Um, but I'm not used to that number of people, so I felt quite overwhelmed. So I, I was thinking, if I lived on that street, maybe I would think carefully, do I want my neighborhood to be a touristic neighborhood? You know, um, Are there any particular um, concerns or new ideas about managing tourism in Shanghai as an industry for the city, especially in, in, the, in the old areas. What are your thoughts on uh, gentrification? <laughs> you know. That's a tough question. <laughs> uh, good question. <laughs> Always say good question. Um, tourism and it's uh, it's always uh, argue with the historic preservation, but I think 
general speaking, when you preserve a building, and when a lot of people take a look of it, maybe that's a good way to educate people. So I think it's a, it's a conflict, but we can control it with the management. For example, uh, the, f the Bidon Palace in China, right? Uh, which was very crowded. But I, I promise you, if you go to the Bidon Palace today, it will be a very overwhelming experiences. That's not the, uh, but uh, of course you need to register ahead. You know, they control the amount of the, with tourists. That's the one way that we can control and give people a better uh, experiences like uh, Yuan, right? Because if we control the, uh, we have the control the uh, entrance and uh, the amount of the tourism, we will give a better. That's always a way to do that. But for example, for the community, how can you control that? That's a problem. And as my point will, you cannot stop people to visit, but we can we can have more place to visit. <laughs> 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 so if we have 10 kinds of Tianzifang, it will not be so crowded, okay? <laughs> and the next question is about gentrification, right? Um, actually, I don't like to talk about gentrification. Um, I think sometimes, uh, or generally speaking, when a place that uh, we, we say it's a little bit gentrification, that means this area is very well preserved. <laughs> or, <laughs> yes, for example, just, uh, Tianzifang had ever been gentrification, but not now. Uh, so I like the gentrifications Tianzifang. <laughs> I don't, I haven't, I, yes, because at that time, Tianzifang is for uh, very boutique shops, for tea, uh, uh, for tea, tea, house. Tea, tea house, and for very uh, well-designed um, design studio. I think that's good. That's good. It, it's good for the historic buildings, uh, but now it's too commercial. Maybe uh, so. That is that gentrification. I think sometimes it de it depends. So that means um, I think it's it's a really good way that if you don't make a good use of this building, people will n move out and the the building situation will be bad. So I think gentrification is not an issue. It's a, it's a fact. <laughs> you need to accept the fact, and I, I think it, no matter it's good or not, it's the reality. You just, but sometimes you cannot stop people to, to change that places to gentrification and from gentrification to commercial. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of, uh, you cannot stop that. So I think it's, it's a fact. So what the key issues is that, is that good for historic preservation? Is that good for conservation of the building? Is that good for uh, for the conservation of their, their area, if it's good, we should we, we, we should support it. If not, we try to give some strategy. For example, I think we still cannot find a strategy to protect Tianzifang to be too crowded, uh, and it's it's in a very uh, urgent situation f for fire because. That too many restaurants, except for Chinese restaurants. But why Thai food is good? <laughs> they, they still need fire. <laughs> so that's interesting. That they have a, they have a, 
regulation, no Chinese food because uh, need big fire. But oh. Thai, why Thai food is good? <laughs> big fire too. <laughs> so interesting, right? Interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yes, yeah, sometimes things are just facts and we have to see what is best for the preferred outcome for an area. Um, I would like now to welcome um, questions from the audience. There are so many of you. It's so good to see that you all come and stay. And perhaps I could um, ask of the audience to do introduce yourself and to keep your questions uh, shorter so we can have more participation. So. Uh, who would like to first question? Okay, one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. Okay, I just take this four first. Maybe uh, I'll take two by two, perhaps, and then we can continue. So the first gentleman in front. Hello. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Then yes. sorry, Shida. My name is James Ng. I'm a retired project manager engineer. I was gratified to see the Facebook, beautiful Facebook office in Shanghai, in the uh, factory, right? and uh, beautifully designed. When Singaporeans travel to Chinese cities, uh, the usual comment is that we are quite hooked on connectivity and our iPhone or iPad. Is uh, Facebook a work in progress or is it uh, very efficient now in China? And the second question is how about WhatsApp? So WhatsApp, Facebook, uh, that's very important to me. Thank you. Uh, I, I so, sorry, I think it, uh, that's a mistake. That's my mistake. I, I did not point that that factory is not in China. Uh, it's in in the San Fran. Uh, it's in the Los Angeles, uh, back uh, in the Bay, in the back Bay. Yeah, sorry for <laughs> for that. Um, huh? <laughs> But sometimes we, in, in our work, <laughs> why we have a collaboration with Shanghai is that we do need a platform to share ideas of what's possible elsewhere so that it can trigger thinking of what's possible in our own cities yeah, as well. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, please, yeah. please. Can I? Uh, do you want a mic? I'm Tan Shi Tiong. I'm a practicing uh, architect and town planner. I have the benefit of staying in Shanghai for 10 years, practicing there from 2004 to 2014. So all the projects that Dr. Wang has mentioned, I'm very surprised. You were all behind it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm very, very grateful to meet you in person and uh, such a young lady and uh, have been involved in such uh, a <laughs> wonderful project. I've been to Tian Zi Fan 10 times. Every time I have friends, I bring to Tian Zi Fan. I don't bring them to Xin Tian Di. I think Tian Zi Fan represents Shanghai. more Shanghai. <laughs> I can see how people live in a Si Fu Men style of buildings, you know. So I'm, I'm very impressed with that. And I've been to Ban and know the underpass and all that. You know, it's great. Now, you mentioned at the end about gentrification. I have a little bit of disagreement with you on that, you know. Okay, I think everybody doing conservation know what is gentrification. I think gentrification, it means that it affects actually the original life of the people. You uprooted them. Okay, to me, Tian Zi Fang has no gentrification because you allow the people to stay there, operate, irrespective of all the shops nearby, upstairs. Life goes on. That is great. That's why I use that as an example. Even right now, I'm doing a conservation project in Haiko. Haiko, to revive the old city of the Hu Chen, you know, in Haiko. I'm using Tian Zi Fang as a case study. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, it, it's great. And my students, I'm an adjunct professor at NUS, teaching urban planning and urban design. I tell my students to study the Shanghai Street Design Guideline published last year, right? Shanghai yeah. is the yeah. first yeah. city in yeah. China publish a street design guideline. I mean, you are one of the first published the urban design guideline. But the street design guideline was very complete. In fact, I will urge URA to study that. <laughs> okay? I think we have not done. <laughs> uh, 
Sh- surely you know that it's not just URA who has to look at Sweden's No offense to uh, a whole Kelvin. group of partners. Oh, collectively, collectively, we'll look at it. <laughs> no offense to Kelvin because we worked together some years back on Serangoon Road, Balestier Street, you know. So I think Shanghai has done a fantastic study on streets. And I love Fusi. I hate Putong. <laughs> I never want to go to Putong. I love Fusi, okay? So that is because of streets. And Singapore hasn't done enough. So I really wish that. I just cut my question short as here. Okay, thanks. Is that a question? That's good. It's, it's, it's good. Uh, I'm the con- one of the consultants of the street guideline, yes. I think uh, uh, Shanghai really p- pay attention to that part because um, uh, actually every time when I meet someone from foreign countries, I would like to take them to Pusi and take a l- from Pusi, take a look of the Lu Jiazui. That's great. But they they always ask me, why not go to Pudong? I say, it's better now to go. If you go, you go yourself. <laughs> 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 you know, reason I have a friend from New New York Times, and later he decided to go by his, himself. So when he was on his airplane, he write a letter, criticize Pudong. <laughs> oh, I hate that. So, do you plan that part? <laughs> okay, so. Uh, so when you combine the com- uh, compare Pudu and Pusi, you will find uh, because I think uh, Pusi is designed designed not for car, right? Because it's at that time we do not have car, <laughs> and Pudu is designed for car. So you when you ca- you can totally feel what kind of things happen. So uh, the strategy is that we try to. Uh, change our mind to pay attention to the not the bird wheel of the city, right? <laughs> to pay attention to the uh, uh, personal uh, feeling of the street. So I think um, the street guideline. Uh, I have one. I can send one pretty quick to you. <laughs> but I think actually, actually, I I like this part, right? It's a new building, but the a lot a lot uh, old streets, so it's very active. So generally speaking, Singapore is a workable city, workable city in the downtown, but not the the new part, right? So, but I think it's generally speaking, it's a very comfortable. Uh, compared with Shanghai, we just start to think of it, but Singapore had already. Done a lot. Well, <laughs> thank you. You're very kind. <laughs> I, I, I think that um, I think Singapore is also interesting because of the different waves of building and planning uh, philosophies being implemented in our country. We have uh, various w- various models of and we can now explore. I think um, I think planning and fashion sometimes also driven by. Okay, planning is also sometimes driven by fashion. I would say, uh, but within it we should take the opportunity to take the best of each period and to see how to get a better future. So, so I do think that for Singapore at the moment, uh, we are moving towards more car light, more car free. We are investing a lot in public transport and mass transport. But the lesson we have from our conserved districts is not just because of the buildings, but it is the uh, idea of how this scale of urbanism um, can be adapted to new demands of the 21st century city. So I think we also think that our old old fabric is not just for the past, but it's to draw lessons for, for new planning. Um, so always good to think about that. Uh, now, the other ST. Yes, you have a question in the back. Yes. My name is ST. I'm a retiree, but interested in heritage issues. I'd, I'd like to echo what the last speaker said in that uh, how can someone so young as you, Professor, Wang Lin, actually be almost single-handedly responsible for the conservation of uh, Shanghai and uh, obviously in all the other regeneration of uh, life of the buildings, of the districts, of the areas in uh, Shanghai. So if you ever think in terms of relocating yourself, <laughs> I, th- I, I, think, I think Singapore will 
we very warmly welcome you. I think there are just two issues that I like uh, to bring up from your presentation. One is about street preservation of the street scene. And as you were talking, I was try trying to think of roads or streets in Singapore that is equivalent to maybe some that you have shown. And I can't think of one. You know, I mean, we often think in terms of Orchard Road as the uh, uh, shopping center, if you like, economic shopping center life of Singapore. But other than that, I can't think of an equivalent of, say, the Boon. I mean, our shoreline was in the area of Beach Road and Bras Basar Road. But then everything has shifted at least a mile towards, towards the sea. So whatever is currently actually lively in terms of the art scene in Singapore, et cetera, is actually in the sea, you know, along the Esplanade. You know, so really there's no equivalent as far as I can think of other than uh, Brass Bazaar in Beach Road. And you know, if you, th if you see what transformation, if you like, rather than preservation of what's been done in Brass Bazaar, I think it falls very far short of whatever you have done as far as the boon is concerned, because the civic district, the open areas in Brass Bazaar are all gone. So it's a sadness for me, because I grew up knowing Bras Basar Road for what it is, but it's no longer there. Now, the other issue that you brought forth, besides the preservation of specific buildings, of uh, areas, is the environment issue that you brought forth. You know, and I think that the fringe areas, as far as uh, the conserved areas in Singapore, is something that has been to my mind, totally neglected. Although we have identified the conservation areas in Singapore, Chinatown, Little India, etc., we have not actually given much thought. I mean, Calvin, uh, uh, really to the fringe areas, you know, so that a beautiful area like Duxton Plain, you know, is has got this huge. Uh, uh, concrete wall just next to it. I think you all know. <laughs> Singaporeans will know what I mean. You know? The pinnacle. Seven blocks of 50 stories next to Duxon Plain. So my question to you, uh, Professor Wang, is what do you think about fringe areas in terms of identified conservation areas? Should they be protected as well? Thank you. Thank you, thank you for your question. And um, actually, I think it's uh, my it's uh, it's my fortune that I sit in my uh, my position and do something uh, I need to do. And it's my fortune that I get support from my leaders. So that's my fortune. So I really appreciate your uh, uh, you know. Uh, so uh, about the questions, but actually, <laughs> I I had just been Singapore twice. Uh, this is <laughs> so I spent here for only ten days together. But uh, I really think um, it's good if we have a area to be preserved, and then we have a area next to it to be controlled uh, in the landscape uh, issues. Uh, in Shanghai, we have, uh, we defined 12 uh, areas, not only control the 
individual buildings, but also the whole areas, the heights. But uh, because Shanghai is like uh, just like Singapore, because the the boundary is so small, and actually there are so many people moving, and we cannot stop it, especially in Shanghai. So we still need to build new buildings. So I do. I really think that Singapore is my point of view. Of course, you you mentioned there's a lot of problem. But I still, <laughs> I still feel that uh, Singapore, although there is a lot of area with very high density, but it's still very walkable and and very comfortable. And you have so many green space, a uh, huge green space among the high-rise building towers. It's a very good strategy to keep a uh, high density and to have a lower uh, high density for greenery. <laughs> so it's a very good strategy. I think it's Shanghai lost his, yes, we, we cannot demolish buildings and build <laughs> greenery space. So we, we lost our chance, but but uh, I think we need to learn a lot. But of course, I think maybe we we can make a better uh, quality for for the streets for people to walk. Right, that's a very important thing for for Shanghai and for Singapore. I cannot. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Maybe just the final two questions, and then uh, the gentleman in here, and then uh, Gabriel at the back. So. These two final questions, please. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Chiu Wing Huang. I'm an architect and planner. Uh, I saw the plan uh, you first started with your talk, the circular wall of Shanghai City. I was recently in Beijing, not doing a project in Beijing. I did a lot of work in uh, China, still doing it, mostly in urban design. So I'm not doing a project in, in Beijing, but I went there because of some related issue in Beijing. But when I was in Beijing, I realized that uh, Beijing actually has lost a lot, especially the straight line geometry, this uh, Great Wall, city, uh, city Wall. And I was told that the last thing remaining on this wall is actually the gate, the southern gate. Only one gate is left. The rest are or rebuilt or not original. But then when I look at the city plan of Shanghai, the wall you showed, uh, it was actually not seeing it for the first time. But each time I look at it, I thought it's something spectacular. To me, it's almost like a, a fantastic deviation from the straight line, from the square. And as most of you know, the square and the circle represent a lot in, in Chinese planning and symbolism and so much. It's like heaven and earth. Heaven is the, the, the circle, you know, the square is the earth. So in Shanghai, I would like to ask you, uh, has there been any visions or any plans or any proposals which have been inspired by this wall? And uh, if you were to do it, uh, what would you like to do about this wall? Any chance of bringing it back or somehow inspired by it? Um, and the next question, please. And, and the first thing is, how do you help us uh, locate it as a kind of overlay over city? Where is it? I do not know. <laughs> that and then the final question by Gabriel. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Gabriel. I'm from Ecomos, and then I just want to. Actually, uh, you, the study that you've done is, I believe, part of the historic urban landscape uh, strategy for uh, China, isn't it? So I think that's uh, quite commendable. The, my question is primarily on um, the types of uh, heritage or buildings that you're looking at. I know that you, you've shared the industrial heritage as something that you're looking, but have you studied um, housing estates or more uh, high-rise housing estates of some something that you want to preserve as well? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> that's a uh, good question. The first question is about the Round City War, right? <laughs> Actually, we still have some original Round City War heritage uh, uh, room there. But I think 
um, compared with other wonderful <laughs> Chinese uh, heritage war, I think if uh, it's a it's a principle uh, not to rebuild the room if if it has already been demolished, we just protect what we should protect, uh, what had already uh, still existed. So as a general uh, principle, that we we do not do that kind of things. Sometimes we do that for tourists, but I, I don't like it, <laughs> generally speaking. Uh, that's my point of view. Uh, the second is about uh, uh, means uh, uh, not only industrial heritage, but some residential area. Actually, uh, two years ago, we defined uh, more than 200 blocks. So with the to be as a block, they need to be uh, preserved. So about one, uh, about 20 uh, community, uh, like a working house community, Chaoyang Xinchun, was preserved. And we has also high rise, the first high rise residential building in the Xu Jia Hui, Chao Xi Bei Lu, was pres uh, are preserved, uh, are in the listed building. And also uh, some village, that we call village, uh, which was built in 1970 to 1980, was, was preserved. So we, we started to do, do that kind of things. And in the meantime, we also preserved some building which was a uh, uh, very uh, typical uh, building, which was famous in late 19, uh, 1990s. But a developer wanted to demolish this building trans uh, from the office building to a hotel. But because this building was the image of Shanghai modernization, <laughs> so a lot of artists, a lot of uh, citizens did not agree to demolish it and build a new one, although the FAR is the same. So finally, we re renovated. We changed the three floor to two floor because uh, the rate is really lower, right? So we still preserve the image of the high-rise building. So it's kind of things that we preserve something not only because of his beauty, but also because of his, his uh, memory of the a group of people or of the citizen. So that's one, <laughs> one thing I need to do, we need to do. I think um, with that, I, I thought something to think about. I mean, I will ask this final question. Um, for Tianzifang and uh, this 1990s building of Shanghai's uh, modernity, you always mention people and artists as sort of driving factors in shaping public perception. Um, and you talk about the image of the city, like the street, the business, the image of the city for citizens. This, this image, uh, to what extent do you think the, the artists have a role in shaping the understanding of the people of their own city. I mean, uh, the, the artists, you know, what they paint, what they write, I, I don't know. And with that, actually, between Pudong and Pusi, looking in the future, do you, do you see that they will continue to compete in terms of which side represents Shanghai? Between, you know, what the Shanghai is saying, this is my city, you know, uh, my city is Pudong or my city is Pusi. This 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 interaction between the artist's um, creation and the, and citizens' own own feeling, perhaps you could share on that. Really a tough tough question. <laughs> 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 yes, uh, for me, of course, I like Pushi very much. But actually, a lot of foreigners they like to live in 
to li uh, to live in Pudong because the atmosphere is good, the road is wide, it's wider. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, um, but generally speaking, people don't like the the blue jaggery, uh, the the CBD because uh, compared with here, the high rise building is good, but the uh, pedestrian space public uh, is too bad. It's too bad for people to. So we, we, there's some professor in the university start to think that we need to add some FAR between buildings <laughs> to <laughs> narrow streets. Yes, uh, I think uh, might not be legal, right? But why not, right? Maybe someday we need to narrow the streets and transit the public space to private space <laughs> because for the for people, right? So for 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 the good uh, urban space. So I think um, I always say that we need to do something uh, with innovation like art. They uh, they are always have a dream and a innovation. <laughs> Uh, uh, dream that to do something that really good for the city. So I think we we need to do some research, and um, also we need to challenge our regulation. If that regulation is re is good or is still good and is good for today's life, so I think it's very important. We we should we can argue and we should we can still. Uh, have a very, how to say, open-minded, to be open-minded to any change which is good, real good for the city. It's not the law, not the act, not the regulation. We should develop, we should, uh, uh, we should explore what is really good for the city. So that's a very important thing. Thank you very much, Dr. Wang, for <laughs> reminding us to be open. Please, round of, another round of applause for Dr. Wang.